Hello, my people. Una welcome back to Ada Universe TV. I greet all of Una well, well. The one that they subscribe, I greet people who don't subscribe. If you still there here, you never subscribe. Follow me, hit the button when it says subscribe. I greet all of Una well, well. Make Una see the jump for my Facebook page where they call Sonia Talk and Go. And make Una beg. Make Una see they follow me, they share my video, just loving sharing. I appreciate you and attack you now well, well. My people, today's story is plenty, is long. But this thing when I want hear so, make you never shout at all. Make I just give you a sumo. Before you go carry your drink and your popcorn, sit down. Make you listen by yourself well, well. Me not be seen at that universe, they talk them. This picky, they confess. As in your papa, they, they abuse them. In your papa, they, they rape them. This sumo picking. The picking they talk am. And this talk we picking don't they talk so. I want to make una take una ye yera. As I talk am before, who let me want to go hear this thing. Nothing a book in see for ghetto. They say this matter, it tie rapper. But we go lose this rapper. Make you foresee what it day on that rapper. Show, and so things they happen for this life. Mothers. Put eye for your picking. When I know what's happen, children supposed to be there with their mothers. Now the truth. Now mama supposed to be train picking. Because some waiting some papa they do these days. I don't know the kind of devil where they enter them. I make I know what's on turn as I talk. Make I just follow me, share this video. Sit down. Make una we yana for the picking mat. I beg una make una help me share this video, this particular video. Make una share them. Mothers, make una wise up. I go see you again for my next video, guys. Thank you and God bless. Bye, guys. Yes, my daughter. You go open mouth, talk clearly. You're going to talk clearly for the whole world to hear your own version of the story. And I want you to know that God in heaven is watching and listening. Promise me you will never lie in the course of this, our conversation. I promise never to lie. You promise? Yes, sir. So tell me the story. Take your time. Okay. In December 2018, during this period, my father called me into his room in Jalingo, my grandmother's house, that I should come and pick a hairstyle I would like to make for Christmas. I went there not thinking of anything because he's my father. I entered the room, he shut the door behind me. My mind didn't go anywhere because I wouldn't think of such a thing. I sat on the bed, we sat, we finished. Um, checking his phone for the pictures and I've picked the hairstyle that I would like to make. But we finished, not for him to start touching me in an unfatherly manner. Where and where? My breast, my my bum bum, just touching me, trying to naked me, trying to remove my clothes. And I try, I rejected him. I said, what is this? He told me that I should keep quiet, I should be still, I should be calm. If I reject him or I resist him, he is going to harm me. I should better remain calm and allow him what he wants, allow him to do what he wants to do with me, and I will leave and nobody will know about this. In the course of it, he told me that if anybody should hear about this thing that just happened now, he is going to kill me. He will kill me and nobody will have anything to ask, ask him how it happened or what happened. He finished and I left. I left crying. It, it, it didn't mean anything to him. Christmas period. It, 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 it went on. It was not like that day only. After that day, it became a continuous process. It is like an everyday thing except I am on my period because I am in a boarding school. I go to school. I can't concentrate. I'm always thinking. I come back home, it's a continuous process. He doesn't allow me to rest except I'm on my period. Sometimes I even have to lie. And if I lie and he finds out that I'm not on my period, it's another case. This has been going on 
2019. He was planning his wedding last year. I, th- I was happy. I thought everything would just end there because I wanted to forget about everything and move on with my life as a 16 year old girl. He was planning for his wedding. How, how he normally does is that he, sco- he starts scolding me because he's, he's very harsh. He's harsh physically. He beats me living with scars on my body. I opened the Facebook account to reach my mom because I call my mom, everybody is there, there's nothing I can tell her. I opened the Facebook account to reach her. When he found out about that Facebook account, he beat me mercilessly with a barbed wire. Scars all over my body, my hands everywhere hurt. I was bleeding on my body. I couldn't reach her. What of the relations in the compound? Didn't they talk to him? Everybody knows he's harsh. And it they don't they don't they don't care my grandmother doesn't care that's his mother yes when he's beating me she'll tell him that he should take me and go and beat me outside i should not die in her compound she doesn't stop him it's not her business i was diagnosed with an ovarian cyst. i started having pains on my side my right side i complained to them they said it was all pretense and I was, they said, okay, they'll take me to the hospital. At the hospital, the doctor was asking me that, have I ever had sex? I couldn't say yes. I told him, no, I've never. Well, he said, okay, we should go and do a scan. When we're going to do the scan, my father said that, if they scan me and they don't find anything in me, he's going to kill me for making him waste his money to bring me to the hospital. We went, we did the scan. On the paper, they wrote, very urgent. I needed surgery for it to be removed. My father said he doesn't care. He will not waste one cobble of his for me, for them to go and do a surgery on me. It's not his business. If he ruptures in me, it's my problem. If I die, he doesn't have anything to lose. He's a man he can have without children. It's me and my mother that I have to lose. Okay. He, he, how, like I said, how he does is that he starts scolding me in the compound, scolding me. I am stubborn. I am this. I am that. He now like he wants to call me to continue scolding me in his room, and like give me advice. When he goes, he does what he wants to do. When he is done, he asks me to stay there. I will not leave his room until he asks me to leave. I'm there. He will pick a phone and call the wife to be, and will be planning for their wedding. When he's done, he will say. The wife is getting married to is the is the senior wife, while me, I'm the junior wife. He compares my mo- my body to my mother's body. He says I have breasts like my mother. My husband will enjoy me. Would I allow him enjoy me before my husband enjoys me? I told him that I'm not your girlfriend, and I'm also not your wife. This kind of thing should not be happening. He said, ah, I should not worry. He's only on the surface. He's not going inside. I am still intact. I said, but there are many girls out there. Why do you want me? He said, no, because I am still fresh and supple. That's why he wants me. He got married last year, June. But it didn't end. He continued. He continued. Where was the wife? They moved out of my grandmother's house to their own house. So he comes to the house, my grandmother's house, and does what he and sleeps with me. Have you ever, who and who have you reported this matter to, and what were their responses? This year in August, because my grandmother is aware, she's she's aware from when it started. She's she was aware of it. You told her. I didn't tell her, but she was aware. Mm. She was aware of course, but I didn't tell her. Mm. But I knew she was aware and she knows she's aware. Mm. Yes. Then who again? This year in August, I got frustrated because 2018, 2019, 2020, I was frustrated. I don't concentrate in school. I'm always thinking, I'm always lost because of what this man has done to me. I was depressed. I said, if you this man is telling me 
to keep such a thing inside of me. I know that I would die one day. This thing will kill me. So it's better I end my life myself. Because if you kill me, it's going to pain me. I took Sniper this year, August. Because this year, when, when school closed for COVID-19, I respect his wife so much. So he called me that his wife would, would, would like to see me in their house for me to help her do some things in the kitchen. I went there for me not to find his wife. They had issues. He got separated. His wife had left. I never knew. But he lied to me that his wife wants to see me. So I went there in the morning. Throughout the whole day, this man slept with me throughout the whole day. I could not walk. I could not sit. It was so painful. It was so painful. Throughout the day. Throughout the day. He starts. He won't eat. He comes. So throughout the day. He will start, stop, go and eat, come back. But yes. So throughout the day, when he's done, he doesn't spill in me. He puts it on my tummy. Wipes it with the tissue and takes it away. I don't know what he does with it. He takes it away. So I was frustrated. And this COVID-19 lockdown is very long. It's very long. I, other times I used to go to school and come back. But this one was very long. How many months was I at home? How many months was I at home? I was frustrated. I, went, I know I would die. So let me just Myself, let me leave this world because there's nothing. I have no peace. Let me just die and leave this world. I drank sniper to end my life. When I took it, he told me that I want to commit suicide for who? Since I want to die, since I want to die, it will help me end my life even before I die. So he was struggling me. I didn't struggle because I was ready to die at that time. He now he, says he saw that I was not struggling. He now left me. When he left me, he told me that I should leave this compound and go and die outside. I will not die in his mother's compound. I went, I was at the gate. I was very weak. I was on the floor. My grandmother was watching me. He was all of them were watching me to die. To die with it so that nobody will ever know about it. Hold the line. You just hold on. 